It was through her that I came into uh, contact with Baba. Her family had come into contact with Baba before I did. And uh, I, perhaps she would like to say something. Would you, darling? Uh, you must have read this uh, book called Wayfarers. There's a mention of my father's state called Sahanpur near Najibabad, where Baba had contacted some us. So my father had uh, met Baba in Dehradun, and I was visiting him at that time, and then I met Baba. So Baba told all of us that Baba is not an ordinary saint or a sadhu or some such person because his state belonged to a place uh, near Haridwar. And he had met hundreds and thousands of sadhus and great souls that in that area. And straight away at that time, Baba came out with the message called Highest of the High. And uh, in that, Baba explains himself to be uh, the God. And just before that, he declared himself as a pa avatar in Mehrasthana. And what else do you say? Uh, what did Baba have to say to you uh, personally? Tell them about that incident about the sari. Uh, when Baba had given his first public darshan in March in uh, Dehradun, I had a beautiful silk sari, almost the same color, and I spread it out for Baba to come and walk on it as he came to sit on the chair that was uh, very beautifully decorated for him. And we all had gone to have Baba's darshan at that time. In 60 or was it 61, I'm not sure, um, Baba had given public darshan and ha had called everybody group-wise. And the instructions were that you were to come, stay in the public darshan for two hours, go away, not to talk to Baba, not to discuss anything with him, not to bring any gifts, not and even not even fold your hands like that, yes. And uh, I decided that it was pointless to go all the way to Pune from Delhi. And, and when, I can't, when I can't even talk to Baba, when I can't even say anything to him. So she wrote a letter. Uh, to Baba, asking that will he, will he give us even one minute uh, of private darshan. This I did not know about this letter. She had um, written it uh, secretly or stealthily. We, we got an open telegram from Baba saying that no, no, no need for you to come this time, come next time. However, somehow it got about that she um, insisted on going and perhaps the day before the darshan was to end, we got the night airmail uh, plane arrived in Bombay and took a fast train to Pune. We went for the two-hour darshan and then that was the end of the program as far as we were concerned. We were staying in a hotel and some other Baba lovers called us for lunch, something like that. We went around town. And uh, one morning, we were supposed to leave that day. Suddenly, there was a knock on our door. I, I joked with her. I said, well, Baba is calling you now to give you private darshan. And sure enough, there was, uh, no, was what was, no, what was the name of the gentleman? Uh, sure enough, uh, Gadekar uh, came to invite us for lunch, whereas we were planning to go back to Delhi earlier. But uh, while he was talking to us, uh, Mayor Das came and Mayor Das said, what are you doing over here? Hurry up, Baba is calling you. So I looked at her and she looked at me. He, she says, how do you know that Baba was calling us? I said, I just joked with you, I wasn't uh, serious. What had happened, what had happened actually, that one train of Baba lovers coming from Hamirpur side had derailed somewhere yeah, yeah. and near Jhansi and they were unable to uh, get to uh, Pune in time for the darshan. So Baba had specially called those people to come and see him on a day even though their darshan program was finished. And we were fortunate enough that day to get a private audience with uh, Baba and I was able to talk to him, I was able to receive his love and his and affection Baba and Baba embraced me where I knew from the telegram that I was told that I was not even to fold my hands but to receive Baba's uh, blessings and grace like this was a very great experience to me. You want to say something? Yes, I think uh, uh, we were very disappointed that Baba had uh, sent us a telegram not to come and that Baba is with, with us, there is no need for us to be there. But uh, somehow something happened in my husband's heart and he started uh, forcing me to go. And he said, what, ha what has happened to you? Why do you want to go? He said, no, no, I think Baba is calling us. Let's go. So with greatest of difficulty, we got the train tickets and plane tickets and somehow we reached Baba. And uh, then, of course, we were just joking and all. And Meher Das came. You must have heard uh, 
his men, his uh, name being mentioned in listen humanity he is the one who who is from hamipur district who made the dead child come to life by taking baba's name and baba had told him not to do this kind of miracles again in his name and he called us and baba gave us private uh, sort of interview and he talked to us for almost 10 15 minutes and embraced both of us and gave us a uh, lot of love and prasad and all that it's a great experience well, i think uh, with, with this both of us say jai baba to all the baba lovers all over the world whoever come in, whoever comes into contact with baba and baba's love jai baba and all of a sudden i was asked to come on the stage and give a song or rather give a hymn uh, composed by guru nanak our first uh, teacher and uh, this song i'm going to sing this afternoon also so you can hear it at that time after giving that song uh, baba embraced me and when baba embraced me i was uh, i heard very fantastic sound come the sound was so fantastic it was uh, it was too overwhelming and very loud and something that i'd never heard in my life before and uh, was it pleasant it, to hear that sound it was very thrilling and i think that because of that sound that uh, made me lose my consciousness and then uh, irish bhai sort of shook me and said come on kusum get up and uh, this thing and baba praised my voice and said you have a very beautiful voice and then he told all the people gathered over there that this is this wasn't ordinary song that i sang it was composed by guru nanak and it was just like god's own uh, song and baba was very happy with me when i came down from the stage i met adi kaka and i asked him if baba has any trouble with his chest because i had so uh, such funny sound coming out of his chest and he started to laugh and then he told me that i'm very lucky that i had this experience with baba and by it was really baba's blessing that i had to I had gone through this experience what kind of sound was that it was like a like a engine train a train engine going very fast while you standing on a platform very loud and the whole platform shakes or like the plane that uh, goes uh, out or when it's coming down to land like you want to close your ears but you just can't uh, help but listen to it and it's too loud very very loud was it one of the darshans given by baba in kurprasad at pune our dear friend dr g s n murthy was also present and dr murthy is a very eloquent speaker in baba's name and very good speaker at that baba called him and said murthy please come and give a speech so he said baba how can i give a speech in front of you he said no no you come and give a speech so murthy bhai got very pleased very honored he came quickly to the dais raised his hand and he said jai baba brothers and sisters as if to go into his speech baba tickled him murthy is very ticklish so murthy immediately stopped he said baba how can i make a speech when you are tickling me he said no 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 you go ahead and make your speech i won't tickle you so again murthy bhai started jai baba brothers and sisters suddenly baba signaled irich irich tickled murthy on the other side so again murthy said baba look at this now irich is tickling me how can i continue with my speech So Baba said, "No, no, you have finished your speech. That's enough. That's enough. Once everybody is sitting here, and you realize that everybody is brothers and sisters, there is no further speech necessary. And of yes, course, brother. universal brotherhood immediately came into our own hearts. And we were, I and my wife, of course, looked at each other and thought that this is how Baba does his, makes us understand what we should or should not think. All right." Yeah. This was in '53 when uh, we had met Baba. Baba had come and uh, took two houses, one for himself and one for the Mandli. And my in Dehradun, my parents' house was just next door where the Mandli was staying. And uh, Baba used to come in the afternoon, every afternoon to see the Mandli from his own house. There. Baba used to uh, come uh, to visit the house where Mandli was staying from his own house, and in between there was the one house which was des deserted, and they had uh, cut across a small path through that house so that Baba was not uh, sort of to go to the main road, and he could come between these this house to the Mandli. And we used to sit in this deserted house in the big compound. There was a beautiful tree, 
and myself with my parents, we used to sit under that tree and see Baba every day. And my parents was uh, asked many times uh, as uh, whether we were disturbing him by being there. And Baba said, no, no, don't worry, my nazar is on you. You don't have to worry about that. I'm very happy and uh, I'm very happy to see you. Don't worry. So then on the 25th of March, there was this public darshan and Mokam had come from Delhi for that. So I asked Baba, Baba, is there any message for him? Please give him any message, if there is any message. So Baba said, no, for him there is no message. Just love me more and more. You all know and you love me and for him he should just love me more and more. And that's enough. Afterwards, Baba distributed Pashat to all of us uh, and embraced us. Yes? But as you say, that message was for me and uh, I have more or less taken that message to heart. And I do believe that loving Baba... Baba, Baba loved us much more than uh, loving God. Of course, as, you, as my wife says, he loves, always loved us more than we can ever possibly love him.